All right. All right. So we have What's next? more free time. Let's give Ren the antique lock. You sure know how to make a girl happy. Yeah, I do. Huh? There's a street musician. Let's go hang out with you, May. Yeah. I hope you're ready, Ben. I'm not gonna go easy on you. <laughs> Someone's eager to learn. I'm impressed you want to try it. It's pretty tricky for a kid your age. That's okay. I've watched Grandpa play before. It always looks fun. I figured he might have had something to do with it. I've seen him playing with his buddies before. Why not ask him to teach you instead of me? I'm sure he'd be really happy to do so. <laughs> Don't worry about it. And I want to play with you, man. Oh, I love. Uh, all right, if that's what you want, we can go around. With that, Van and Yume started playing. Just the act of teaching Yume how to move all the pieces was a struggle in and of itself, let alone all the other rules and complexities in chess. She'd flick her pieces at his to knock them down one... Knocked him down one moment, but the next she'd be trying to use already captured pieces as her own. But Van's patience never wavered. He gently and slowly continued teaching Yume the rules behind chess in an easy to digest way. Oh, is that how you're gonna play? Yep, my house, my rules. My mistake, your highness. <laughs> well, as long as she's having fun. Little by little, Yume finally began to grasp the rules. Her tendency to make a move guide just by intuition made her very unpredictable. Your turn, Yumes. Hmm, who's next? Haven't been playing for long, but her instincts are real sharp already. No hesitation will make it a play either. Well, I guess she's still a kid. She's good at catching me off guard. I know, how about this? <laughs> Take that. Your turn, Van. Whoa, that's a really good play there, kiddo. Keep this up and you might end up going pro when you're older. <laughs> Maybe I'm just glad you're having fun. Uh, are you not having fun too? I am. I'm having lots of fun, and it's because because you and it's because you are, Van. You've been so happy lately. You're always smiling now that I'm yes and Barry and Aaron and Rosetta are here. No. <laughs> what was I not happy before that? Nah, you were more like a sourpuss. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't wrong, kid. Not a lot to be happy about back when I just started. Just a bunch of shady jobs. I was seeing the, I was just seeing the worst of people. I thought I knew what I was getting into, but spend too long trying to buy nothing but darkness and you eventually go blind. I don't think I can thank you enough there, kiddo. That's, that bright smile of yours was like a lifeline for me, even when everything else in my life was great. If only you knew how special you are. No wonder your granddad's so crazy about you. Hey, are you listening to me? It's your turn, man. Come on. Oh, sorry, you. Okay, my next move is... Hey, you punk. Don't you think it's about time I had my granddaughter back? It's getting late. <laughs> Crap, I lost track of time. Sorry, kiddo. We'll have to finish our match another day. Oh, but I want to keep playing. But okay, I had fun. Look, Grandpa. Look, I learned how to play chess. Now we can play together. You may. Ah, that's why she wanted me to teach her. <laughs> um, on second thought, I may have been too strict. You can keep playing with our good-for-nothing neighbor. Just make sure you go to bed not too late. Really? Yep, you earned it for making your old Grandpa so proud. Just promise not to keep your mom waiting or she might get mad. Yay, I promise. <laughs> you are such a sucker for you. Can't imagine as much you wouldn't do for her. No one asked you. Let's split into teams. Me and Grandpa against you, man. <laughs> Two on one? Well, that ain't fair, but I'm in. If I get to play your granddad, then that means I don't have to hold back and... I don't think so. Only one of us gets to look good in front of you, mate. And I'm certain you understand who it will be. <laughs> <laughs> Three of them kept playing deep into the night until an exasperated Paulette finally came to check on them. Play. She's just great. Yeah. Hmm. Vans max HP plus 100. Nice. Unrivaled connection. I thought I already did that. I thought that's what the bond was. Weird. But okay. All right. No. Riverside. Old Punk. What's that? 
There it is. Taking off now. Go into the movies. Watch that pool and Wolverine. What's playing right now? <laughs> There's a gold blood director's cut. Tuna mirror for one. Let's grab a seat. Oh, yeah. Director's cut. <laughs> I've been, they've been gassing it up. A sinister pharmaceutical company seeks to shake the very foundation of the world with a deadly engineered virus. Yep. Yeah. Task of stealing its design documents, Zoe and her partner Rick began sniffing for clues, which leads them to the chief developer at the lab, Smesker. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe attempts to get close to her target in the way that she, an A class spy, does best. Damn. <laughs> oh. oh, damn. Stop it, please. I told you, I've already got a boyfriend. Oh, I heard you loud and clear. I also recall you saying that he's buried neck deep in debt. Tell you what, I'll pay off his debt in full, on one condition. Break up with him and be mine. If you still refuse, then I'm afraid I must ask you to resign. So what'll it be? You can ask me, but I won't listen. <laughs> oh, Rick. I'm so sorry. Could you at least look away, sir? Really not used to this sort of thing. My, my, aren't we shy? Very well. Just don't keep me waiting. Plot. <laughs> yes, that's a good girl. There's absolutely nothing to be embarrassed about. Psych. <laughs> I'm gonna have so much fun stripping you bare. Oh. <laughs> gotcha, you naughty boy. Damn. What a great movie. <laughs> such such a plot. Uh huh. So much. <laughs> what the? Why are you here? Uh, of all people, I could have run into. Why did it have to be you? You're not going to tell on yes about this, are you? Nah, your secret's safe with me, kid. I won't tell your president friend either. I just find it quaint that your idea of mischief amounts to some good old lying about your age while you're sneaking out of the dorm. I wasn't talking about that. I mean, definitely don't tell the girls about those things either. I'm more worried about them finding out what I watched, so... There you are. <laughs> I can't believe you, of all people, broke curfew. You had me so worried. Odette, why are you here? Ren figured if I'd find you anywhere, it'd probably be the movie theater, and what do you know? She was right. I'm glad you at least had Van with you. What did you two watch here anyway? Uh Funny you should ask that. We ended up catching the same movie. It's supposed to be adults only, but he wanted to see it so badly, I decided to sneak him in with me. I see. What were they playing at this hour that Albert had to ask? Oh, that's what you saw, was it? <laughs> yeah, we, we saw yeah. them. What? What's with that look? I'm, I'm a red-blooded American straight male as much as anyone. I like boobs. Nothing, nothing. You're just a teenage guy at the end of the day. Mm. I'm begging you, whatever you do, please don't tell on yes. Van's conversation in the theater continued for a brief period. Soon enough, however, the two sides parted ways in the lobby. From there, Van got on with the rest of his evening. Hey, it looks like they're selling commemorative brochures in this movie. Maybe I should pick one up for a souvenir. Mm. Hmm. Oh no, you're just dying to see Wolves Requiem. The the movie that won the best feature. Oh, I mean, you could have just... You didn't have to reload it. Like, I'm sure it would still be in theaters. They can only watch one movie a night. Oh. And we're not going to be back here for another night for a long time. Ron, a young officer of the law, is hot on the heels of a gang he once had ties to. While pursuing the case, he meets a girl named Michelle. She is freed from the clutches of the gang. But they saddled her with an insurmountable debt with little hope of paying it off. Ron takes it upon himself to look after the girl, who begins to develop feelings for the young officer. 
before she can act on it. However, the gang finds her and snatches her away once again. Fueled by the fires of rage, Ron rushes into their hideout and engages the gangsters in a gunfight. He emerges victorious by the skin of his teeth. He rescues Rochelle from her captivity and the two embrace each other at last, overjoyed to have made it out alive. And it was at that moment when one of the fallen gangsters lifted up his quivering hand and pulled the trigger. Michelle, hold on. Oh, no. Ron, are you, are you all right? You're not hurt, are you? I'm fine, see? Not a single scratch on me. Thank goodness. I fulfilled Always my make sure they're then. dead. Shoot them in the head. You remember it, right? You're always protecting everyone. So one day, I'll be the one who protects you. Of course I remember. Save your strength, Michelle. Help will arrive at any moment. But it doesn't. Hey, over here! I need oh. a medic now! Do me a favor. Can you go back? Run. Your arms... Are so warm when you hold me like this my fear just melts away come on that's not even a fatal gunshot wound it was right here no vital organs are right here heart lungs liver and kidneys like right here this is just fat and blub not even a fatal gunshot wound Hey, is that Van I see? Oh. Oh, hey, Jin. Didn't realize you were here. This time of day is the only stretch I get to myself. B filled me in on everything that happened around the film festival in Tarbad. That's how I learned about the movie and it winning the first Leon Jor. When I saw they were doing reruns, I couldn't pass up seeing it. Makes sense. It won that award for a damn good reason. It's probably the best movie released this year. A real masterpiece. Golden Blood would say different. Not to mention that Nina Fenley and her co-star both took the awards for Best Actress and Actor on top of that. I can see why. It was great stuff. Lots of macho action and just as much romance that it really pulls all your heartstrings. I loved it. But more importantly, Golden Blood. Would you go back for the commemorative thing for Golden Blood? The poster? I have. To, I already have the poster. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I already own the poster. <laughs> It's impressive how gritty it manages to depict the conflict between the police and gang while still being so entertaining to watch. Makes you want to follow Leslie Lamb's work and see what else he puts out. Can't say I blame you. The press loves him just as much as the movie nerds like me. I have to imagine he's knee-deep in his next film by now. Looking forward to checking it out as a fan when it's out myself. Man's conversation in the theater continued for a brief year. Soon enough, they left. Hey, it looks like they're selling my order of brochures. I'll get some brochures. We'll get some brochures. You like brochures? Yeah. Tube acquired. Mm -hmm. I also like crashers. Not so much to get an account. Hey there. What'll it be? I wouldn't See say that. I'm sure Lots you Lots of good stuff. Oh, I don't know. Let's do this. Let's do this. What the fuck? What are you jackasses doing? Junifer. The hell, man? Why do those guys think they are? Who do those guys think they are? Chill it, Downey. I get how you feel, but shouting's done doing nothing for us. Oh, but I'm not letting them get away with this. Hell no. Not with our street racer pride on the line. Seconded. We should take our chance while we can. What's going on here? Fizz! Guess I could let you know. There's this bunch of street racers causing trouble for us ever since they turned up in the capital. They're taunting us, I tell you. They drive like madmen around town just to get on our nerves. I ran my car into a guardrail thanks to their dumbasses. Oh, I just thinking about it, it gets my it gets me angry all over again. The hand me down I got from Downey got trashed real bad too. Dude, she had to be sent to the body shop. How can we let loose and enjoy a street drive with them with them tearing it up around town? Yeah, they sound pretty bad. Who are we dealing with here? They call themselves the High Bloods. There's four of them, and they all come from Morassia. They used to stick to their turf, but recently they started moving here. 
They're all rich kids, obviously, and their cars are really souped up. What's more, their leader, Lucio, is the grandson of Etoile's current company president. Good speed boost. He's got a modded Etoile sports car. Ain't no slouch as a driver, either. Last we raced, he passed me by like I was just crawling through the street. Can you believe that? Pull up. You said it was the Etoile's president's grandson. Man, that sucks. Last thing you need is someone related to the company's top brass being a dick. And he's not the worst of it. There's another guy that's even more of a reckless driver. His name's Damien, and he styles himself as their main fighter. He's all cocky, taunting us from his bike just because he can take their tighter turns than any of our cars. He's the one that did my baby in. I'll never forgive that bastard. Never. He thinks he's better than us car drivers, does he? So what are you planning to do about these guys? Surely you're not just going to let them keep running wild. Definitely not. We've tried warning them over and over to stop behaving like this, but it's fallen on deaf ears. Since they're not heeding warnings like that, I tried to talk to Lucio directly. Only thing he said was, if you want us to leave, you'll have to beat us in a race. We're actually on our way to race right now. Yeah, I guess my timing's just that good. You could say that. <laughs> There's four of them, but me and Graham are the only ones with rides right now. And that's not even counting our counting car specs and driving ability. Hate to admit it, but it's stacked not and it's stacked. And not in our favor. But we can't just give up. Yeah, better to lose outright than to flake out on them just you just lose by default. Not like we're going to lose, though. We're not back down until they're in the ground. Wish us luck. Hmm. I don't want to sit back and let a bunch of rich assholes wreak havoc and eat it. Maybe I could lend him a hand here. Bro essential. You mind if I join? I appreciate the sentiment, but this is our problem to deal with. Wouldn't be right to drag you into it. Hard to disagree. This goes beyond just you. It involves all car lovers now. As a fellow driver myself, I can't just stand back and let a bunch of punks with no sense for safe driving screw my home up. I want to teach him a lesson. Man, <laughs> now that's what we like to hear. Don't see why he can't join. Why not let him? Alright, thanks, man. You're really saving our asses here. You might honestly be the best help we could have got. I respect you a lot, man. Thanks for saying so. That still leaves the problem with... Dealing with Damien, though. I'm no biker, so I'm not going to be able to help there. Not so sure how we're going to deal with that niggling little detail. Well, that's all for today. Then, now back to my bike. Oh, hey, Hermes. Mm -hmm. Why are all of you gathered here? Hermes, your timing couldn't be any better. Got some free time on your hands? Huh? I mean, I'm done for the day, so I guess I do. Sweet. I see, so you're going to be racing them to teach them a lesson. Yeah, it would really help if we had a biker of your skill level on our team. What do you say? You up for it? <laughs> sure, I'll join your team. Teaching a naughty rider how to behave sounds like fun. I'll make sure they think twice before causing trouble in the capital again. Glad to see you so fired up for this. I really appreciate you agreeing, too. Now it feels like we have a fighting chance. Yep, it's going to be a proper four versus four race. Now all of us... Now let's left is leaving them in the dust. Anyway, clock's ticking. Let's get going to the meeting spot. You ready to go? Ready whenever you are. Same? Then let's roll. Well, well they're on the clock now. Don't go. Boom, don't go, don't go, don't go. Wow. Is this the meeting spot? Yeah, just beyond here is the highway we're using. But we're supposed to meet face to face right here first. Looks like they've arrived. What an ugly fucking car. Would you look at that? That's a hell of a ride. Right? A lot of mirror went into its went into customizing her. This ain't gonna be an easy race. Hello and good evening, Street Racers. I'm impressed you didn't just turn tail and run. So you really showed up, high bloods. Hmm, I don't recognize those two. Well, thanks to your biker, our cars are in the shop. So I figured I'd call in some help. Hey, look at these small fry. At least 
and try and make this one for us, all right? What? I dare to, I dare you to say that again. Don is all kinds of fired up now. Now I think it's time we reintroduced ourselves. We're the High Bloods, a team composed exclusively of those who are elites even among the elite. Heh, <laughs> pleasure. You know, I completely forgot until you said the name, but I heard about the High Bloods a few years back. Heard they were nothing but a bunch of pampered rich kids. Kind of like you. Ah, you must be referring to our predecessors. They apparently disbanded after doing a tour of Crossbow. Now their name is ours. Huh, is there some specific reason behind inheriting their name? Indeed there is. While I don't approve of the way they love drinking women and gambling, as former nobility, we identify with how they value their chosen bloodlines that gave them power and wealth. It is only fitting that we consider ourselves the true high bloods. Former nobility, eh? Been a while since I've heard anyone call themselves that. Hey, you don't hear that kind of thing going around here much. Maybe it's because they're from Arasingham? Mm-hmm. Up until the noble institution was abolished during the Calvardian Revolution, Arasingham was the royal capital. A shame that even after decades have gone by, there are still old fossils that can't throw away their elitist bullshit. How dare you! Lucille's family line was a great noble house that had the trust of even the royal family. It's fine, it doesn't bother me. Commoners could never hope to understand our noble thoughts. What I cannot forgive, however, is that you people don't know your place. You insist on getting in our way. You're nothing but an eyesore to us drive, and that's why we're going to make you leave the capital streets. You got a lot of nerve. It's a ride that you think causing trouble for folks uh, with your reckless driving is a way to have fun. As street racers, how could we how could we hand these streets to you when you lack basic manners or composition? Compassion. Wow. Okay. Fucking you made it. Heh. <laughs> You're just getting yourself all worked up over... Just what are you getting yourself all worked up over, commoner? Just look at you and your half-assed custom ride because you've got no mirror to spend. you got no right to talk when you can't even bring out the true worth of your rides. Well, damn, you got a big mouth on you for such a little brat. If you know so much about the true worth of our rides, then why don't you teach me? Hmm. Don't think we're just going to take this sitting down. It's time we settle the score right here, right now. Yeah, get ready, high bloods. <laughs> Drivers with Rexus, you have no right to call you themselves street racers. So we're making this your last drive. It would have, it would appear we have four vehicles each. So how about we race one-on-one? -on -one? When you are ready, we'll leave for the expressway. Don't disappoint us. And so with their street racer pride on the line, the curtain to their fierce battle rose. After confirming the rules of each race one more time, each participant went right to work and preparing their vehicles. Okay, let's decide who's going to race who. Think I could go up against the biker on their team? Sure thing, just ride safe, okay? <laughs> but of course. So who's going to face Lucio? Could you leave him to me? It's my job as leader to get revenge for Downey. I have to. Graham, this race is about you guys. Whatever it is you're thinking, I'm down. That being the case, you said it yourself. If... If you go as is, you're going to lose. I'm not even talking about your driving technique either. If we're going by specs, it's going to be real tough for you. But, and I hate to say this, my truck could handle his ride. Hell, I promise you I won't lose. Van. Alright then, Van will be racing Lucio instead. We're already borrowing your skills, we might as well be in it to win it. You got that right, I'll cut that spoiler brat down to size. Then I guess that means we'll handle Lucio's two flunkies. If I remember right, they both came in here in the Etoile Sedans. By the way, I've seen that Roger guy up close and personal before. I think I've got a decent idea of how he operates. Yeah, I knew I could count on you. Then I'll take on the other guy, Tebow. Great, sounds like we're all squared away. Once we wrap up our fine-tuning, let's hit the road. We're rooting for you guys. Go kick some ass. And please don't get hurt. Thanks, guys. I promise we're going to beat those high bloods. But the matchup decided and everyone got, got in their cars, and they were off for the race. The first round pitted Juniper against Tebow. Juniper's Leno sedan had the edge in traction due to the love and care she put into tuning it. As the race went on, she slowly but surely narrowed the gap between her and Tebow. However, her vehicle lacked the horsepower required to best his sedan, which boasted a roaring engine that ultimately led him to victory. For the next race, Graham stepped up to the plate, ready and willing to avenge Juniper. Graham's Inger was lightning fast sports car, but the Rogers decked out sedan was no slouch either. It was a close race, with both cars being neck and neck and with, from start to finish. In the end, Graham's powerful traction allowed him to emerge victorious by a hair's breadth. After that, it was time for the third round to commence. We're at one and one right now, so we don't have this in the bag just yet. 
That just makes this all the more exciting. It'll be a cool day in hell before I lose some pathetic courier lady. Get ready to choke on my dust. You stole my line. The starting line's up ahead. Time to get serious. Holy hell, look at her go. We can't even see her anymore. <laughs> Eat that, loser. Afraid it's a little early to celebrate. That thing's acceleration isn't half bad, but its top speed doesn't hold the candle to my bike. Specs aren't the only thing that matter in a race, you know. On that point, you and I agree. That scumbag just rammed his handlebars against hers. Talk about dangerous. The fact that he pulled it off without losing his balance shows he's no amateur. It's still reckless, though. Those guys are freaking crazy. Come on, I dare you to try and overtake me again. If you do, I'll hit your dingy little bike with everything I've got. Oh, what's the matter? Can't keep up? Or is our wimpy-ass courier getting cold feet? There's less than 500 yards until the finish line. Victory is as good as mine. This is the decisive moment. I can slow down, make him think I've given up, and speed past him when he least expects it. Or I can rev up right now and punch it. We're gonna slow her down. Throwing in the towel already? What a wuss. Just stick to carrying around people's junk in the future. Get dunked on, bitch. What? Bye. <laughs> Pieces and deuces, baby. Haha, <laughs> yes. Go, courier lady. She caught him off guard by speeding past him at the last second. What an incredible strategy. She even had me fooled. That was one hell of a secret weapon. Nice job. Was that a turbocharger? Something along those lines. I was hoping I could win without revealing it. But them's the brakes. Well, guess I'm up next. Go get them, Van. Knock the high bloods off their high horses. He really did customize every part of that Etwa scar, from the suspension to the spoiler. You must be daft if you think you can take me with that little girl's car. You've slighted me with your hubris, and I will make you pay for it. There's more cars on the road now. Using the turbocharger would be way too risky. Bah, he swerved around those cars like it was nothing. Thankfully, all this traffic is preventing him from hitting his top speed, so I can keep up with him. Can't get too cocky here, though. He might not be on Maxim's level, but he's still a force to be reckoned with. I had hoped he had a trick up his sleeve like that woman did. I was so looking forward to making a fool of him. But it's clear he has nothing. What a disappointment. We're approaching the point where the traffic from the Riverside District joins the expressway. This time of day, maybe I could... Looks like he couldn't keep pace with me. How pathetic. Someone forgot to take out yesterday's garbage. Why must there be so many of these infernal trucks on the expressway at night? Bye. What? Ha, your lack of knowledge of the area is coming back to haunt you, bud. Damn, he caught off faster than I thought he would. Well, look at that. So you do have a modicum of skill after all. Too bad it's futile. That pile of scrap can't match my car's acceleration and speed. I might be able to secure victory if I use my turbocharger, but it'd be risky. Should I do it? Prioritize the safety. No, I can't risk hurting anyone. I will accept no less than an overwhelming victory. He's got a turbocharger? Don't use that here. It's too dangerous. Whoa. Bye. Tried to warn you, dumbass. Loser. And that's that. This race goes to us. They did it. You guys are amazing. Yeah, you even surprised us. Seriously, way to go above and beyond. <laughs> Sometimes things just work things just work out, you know? But we really have Hermes and Van to thank for all of this. It was the least I could do after you came to me for help. It was a close shave, but hey, I got to show off a little, so it's all good. So, High Bloods, you're going to keep your promise, right? Curses, how could this have happened? Our machines were tuned to perfection. We were in the peak racing condition. I'm sorry, Lucio. If only I'd gone faster. I managed to win this time, but to be honest, I don't know how it would turn out if we did a round two. Never thought I'd run into a biker as wild as her. Here, I was planning to run circles around her, but she ended up running circles around me instead. Damn, man. You guys, fine as promised, we will come nowhere near the capital from this day forward. We will also cover the repair costs for your two vehicles. Is this to your satisfaction, commoners? I've got issues with your tone, but yeah, that works. Well, hey, that's pretty generous, actually. Maybe you're not as bad as I thought. 
Bro, is that all it takes to win you over? They're the reason our cars are all busted up. Well, now that all's said and done, it's time we return to Arasion. However, do not misunderstand. In no way have you recognized that your style of driving, that our style of driving is worse than yours. When next we meet, you shall be met with overwhelming defeat. There should not be a next we meet, and may you never forget it. Yeah, just you wait and see. Next time, I'm going to blow your socks off. Be gone. Huh? Just what is all that supposed to mean? I guess they won't mess around here for a while, but they'll be back for revenge at some point. What? Why do they get to decide that? What was the point of this whole deal then? Heh. If only they were more honest with themselves. Uh, I'm glad things worked themselves out in the end, I guess. Well, it wouldn't have gone half as well if you and Hermes weren't there. There's no way this is the end of it, but for now, we've at least chased the high bloods off. Thanks for the help, you two. It's no biggie. I enjoyed myself, so it was worth it. Likewise, I'm happy my orbital bike skills proved useful. Me. Until the battle against the high bloods came to an end, with everyone singing praises for one another's efforts. On the way back, Hermes parted ways with the group, and Graham and his people returned to the repair that shop. Takes care of that. Looks good to me. Same. Yeah, fun. Hmm. Alright. 